Hello and welcome to Durzel's Doodles. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to draw Bugs Bunny. So what we'll have to do is split it into three different shapes. So the bottom half is the cheeks and the mouth. The center is the forehead and the eyes. And the top half will be the ears. So what we're doing now is we're just setting a guideline as to what the lower half is gonna be shaped like. So in here, I'm just creating a rough outline. So the edges will be where the cheeks are gonna end and it's quite squashed, sort of squashed oval. So I'm just setting up the guideline. And so I want it at a three quarter view. So I'm gonna be setting it off kilter. And so my center line isn't gonna be straight. It will be curved. So I'm just adding this curve around it. So that will technically be the center of the face and he'll be aiming off at an angle. So here I'll be doing the shape of the forehead. So it's an unusual shape. It's longer on the left side and it's more squished on the right. So I'm just setting the shape there. And then here we are adding that center line again. We're continuing it from the bottom half through to the top. And now we're just gonna add the guidelines for the ears. So just two, two rough lines. And the two lines aren't gonna be symmetrical. The left one is gonna be angled different from the right. Okay, so now we're just adding the nose. So we're placing it in our center line. So it's another little oval shape similar to the bottom half. And then what we're doing now is we're adding the top lip. So it's two little curves, sort of U shapes connected in the middle. And it's just placed underneath the nose. And these two curves will be where the teeth are gonna to attach to. It almost looks like a fancy W shape. And so it's almost connected up to the nose. So what we're now doing is we're adding two sort of wavy wavy lines and that will be the rest of the top of the mouth okay so now I'll be creating the bottom lip of Bugs Bunny so what I'll be doing is just joining the two points together with a fancy sort of curve shape so it's just joining those two wavy points and now I'll be creating the tooth of Bugs Bunny so it's pretty much just a square shape, but I'll be drawing it within those two curves of his top lip. And the good thing about that center mark is that I can use it as a guideline for the separation between the two teeth. So I'm just drawing in that, that mark now. Okay, now I'll just add in the tongue shape. So it's just two sort of heel shapes. I'm going to wedge it between the teeth and the mouth just to sort of place it inside and now I'll be creating the top of the cheek and the rest of the bottom half of the face so I'm just creating a line starting from the nose and working round following the guideline of that oval that I drew earlier and then the same on the other side but the other side because it's on three quarter view I'll be squashing it and I will join that up with the side of the center half of the face. And now onto the center half. So that will be the outside of Bugs Bunny's forehead. So I'm just making sure the shape of that is correct. And there's a little ridge just above his nose. So I'm just drawing in that ridge right now. Just adding in that curved definition just to protrude it a little bit more. And on that curve as well, another line is drawn just to show the bridge of the nose. And this bridge will connect to the eye. So it's a sort of two in one guideline right there. And now I'm just drawing the rest of the left eye, just making sure it fits in, in between the bridge of the nose and the side of the head. And now for the other eye, the other eye will be bigger, but because it's on that three quarter view, it's making it look like it's closer to the screen than the other side. 
so don't worry that they aren't the right shape. So I'm just drawing in this eye right now. So this eye has a lot more area to work with because it's got the other half of the face being a lot larger. So I'm just drawing in the shape. Making sure I join the whole eye to the bottom of the top of the cheek. And now I'm just drawing in the lines for the eyelid. So Bugs is going to have quite a quite a chilled sort of look in his expression. So I'm just drawing in the circles of the eyes. So he's not looking exactly at us, he's looking just off to the right. So I'm just emphasizing the curve of the eye. And now with the eyebrows, they aren't official shapes. They aren't actual eyebrows themselves. It's just the outline of the eyebrow that we're drawing in. So I'm just drawing in the left eyebrow ridge now. And it's just a simple curve going from the middle of the bridge of the nose to the outside of the face. And the right eyebrow ridge is a lot higher and a lot larger, just to emphasize that three quarter view. And to give bugs an almost uncaring expression. So now for the ears, I'm just drawing in the curve of the right ear. So I'm following that guideline I drew earlier making sure it joins from the top of the forehead but because I've drawn the face so big I won't be able to draw the entire ear so I'm just drawing it as much as I can. With the left ear I'm just drawing it in now but I'm making sure that the angle is separate to the right one just to emphasize that they're two different ears in two different positions. Now with the right ear what I'm drawing on the outside is more of a curved sort of S shape. So it's just to give a bit of a bump to Bugs' ear, just to show that there is a bit of form to it. So I'm just drawing in that shape now. And for the left ear, the exact same, but it will be smaller because it's a smaller ear, it's a bit further back. Okay, so with the inside of the ear, I will now follow the guidelines of the outside that I drew earlier. So a simple curve for the inside part, and that S shape, making sure to overlap that one on the curve on the inside just to show that there is a bit of definition, a bit of separation between the two halves of the ear. And the same on the other side has been done. Okay, and now we'll be adding three tufts of hair to the top of Bugs's head. So all they are are just little tiny spikes of different sizes. The center one is the biggest spike, but making sure that they all overlap each other though. and the entire tuft is gonna be hidden by the top eyebrow. Okay, so now I'll just be adding some little final touches. So for the cheeks, I'll be adding in some more tufts similar to the forehead, three tufts, all similar sizes, but making sure that they overlap, just to give a bit of a furred cheek effect. It's quite a simple, simple way of doing it. So that's the right side being done and the left side is just going to be exactly the same just a lot thinner so the chin has been drawn in as well so that's just showing the base of the mouth and so what i'll be doing now is just drawing in the lines for the neck of bugs bunny so two simple lines but what I'm also going to do is because it's at three quarter view there is going to be a center line so I'll be putting the center line towards the left of the face. So I'm just sketching in that line now. And then there's also another little tiny line just to indicate where the white fur meets the gray fur. So I'm just drawing that. And now what I'm doing is I'm just popping in the whiskers of Bugs Bunny. So it's three whiskers either side. So it's just three clean, simple lines just being drawn in. I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ink everything just to clean it all up and I'll be right back. I 
modeling work's done and it's now been erased. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now go into it with the colors. So what I've got is three different shades of gray. So I'm gonna go for the lightest shade in order to do the shadows on the white part of Bugs's face. So I'm just adding that in now. That's a CG2 cool gray. So I'm just using that on the edges of the face where the light source will be against, just to give a bit of form. So the light source is coming from that top left area. So I'm just adding in the shadow to the opposite direction. Just making sure I'm sketching in. So now I'm gonna color in the base of the chin in that same shade of gray. And I'm adding the gray to the top of the cheek, but I'm making sure I stop about halfway across, just because at that point the light will be hitting the top. So just making sure we stop at the right point. And I'll be adding the gray to the top lip as well, just at the base of that top lip, and to the base of the lip where the teeth are attached to. All of this just gives it a little bit more form. And I'm adding a shadow to the base of the, of the bottom lip, just where the tooth will cast a shadow. And I am now adding a shadow to the bottom of the nose. What I'm gonna do is add a slight shadow to the top of the teeth, just at the point where it connects to the bottom lip. And now I'm going in with the darker gray, just making sure all the darker gray parts of Bugs's face is now being colored in. Still in the same way of the lighter part, I'm going against the light source. So all the places on the right of his face will be darkened. And the corner of his nose as well. Also the right side of the bridge of his nose. That'll be a dark shadow as well. So I'm just, so I'm just coloring that in. Just making sure I add as much darkness as I need for the key points of his face, just to give him a bit more form. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of depth near the top of his forehead as well, just to separate that from the eyebrow. And I'm adding some depth through darkness into the tufts of his hair and the side of his eyelids. The side of the eyelids are important as well because it also gives that definition to his eyes and makes them stand out a lot more. And I'm also adding some darkness to the right side of his ears. the left ear as well I'm going to add shadow similar to the right but I'm going to make it a lot more pronounced just because I want to set that ear back a little bit more so I'm just adding more shadow than the right ear even though it is closer to the light source it is further back from our point of view so it will be darker and now I'm just going through with a lighter color of gray just blending the darker gray through so the main goal is to fill in the rest of Bugs Bunny's forehead and ears in that gray. So as you can see, I'm just making sure it's all being filled out. It's all being blended. And so now what I'm doing is I'm going into the ears with a cream colored marker, and I'm just adding the shadow to the right side and to the top inside of the ears. And so I'm going through now, I'm blending it in with a barely beige marker. And that marker has got a slight pink hue, but it helps to flesh out that color a little bit more and it makes the ear look a little bit more realistic at the same time and so what I'm doing now is I'm adding the color to the mouth so the back of the mouth and the inside of the cheek will be a darker flesh color so I'm using the CG4 gray just on the inside of the mouth just to color in those three points 
and what I'll be doing now is using a flesh colour to blend through that grey so it will be a darker flesh and it will also show that there is depth inside the mouth, a cavity. And for the tongue, I'll add a little shadow as well. So I'm adding a CG2 grey and using that same flesh colour again to blend through. So that will be the same colour as the back of the mouth, but because of that lighter grey and the prominence of the flesh, it will make the tongue stand out compared to the back of the mouth. And it will bring it a little bit more forward to the eye. And I just went in and added some more grey to the back just to darken that mouth again. And now I am using the flesh for the nose. So I've just added that same flesh colour that the tongue used. And I'm adding a little shadow at the base of the nose just to give it a bit more of a 3D effect. And what I'm doing now is just adding black to the main eye of Bugs Bunny. So I always enjoy this bit because this is the point where you can see the character come to life. And it's nice to see that he's got a bit of personality once his, once his eyes have been coloured in. So what I'll be doing now is I'm just going to be adding something called a specular highlight with a white marker. So that's the little bit of light that bounces off the eye. So it doesn't usually happen in a cartoon character, but I feel that adding that little specular highlight gives a little bit more life to the character and I feel like it makes him a little bit more approachable. So we are all finished now, so I'm just going to pop my signature on and I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you can like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it and check out my other videos. Thank you.